Jonathan Pitayo is the owner of Vive Promo and Print Company. Born and raised in Kansas City, this 20-year-old entrepreneur knows how to make his dreams reality. Starting in middle school hustling iPhone fixes to creating his own clothing brand, Jonathan now has a successful printing company in Kansas City, Kansas. Oh, did we mention he also sells real estate on the side? I'm a hustler, baby. I just want you to know. Not Jay-Z, JP. Be prepared to be amazed at the ambition, determination, and mindset of Mr. Pitayo. This is Interrupt KC. Enjoy this episode. Welcome back to Interrupt KC, the podcast dedicated to people, places, and things right here in Kansas City. I'm your man, d Rob. This is J.L. We got Nick behind the scenes making sure everything's running sm- silky smooth, man. Silky. There we go. Silky, silky smooth, Nick, man. silky smooth. Yeah, there we go. I like... Well, maybe, maybe just silky smooth. We'll leave it like that, Maybe man. just silky smooth. Maybe that's, silky maybe smooth that's the Nick. Silky smooth Nick, man. Silky smooth I like it. Nick. I like it. Yeah. Shout man. out Nick, man. Yeah, man. What's happening, man? Man, you know what? I was actually on my way here, and I, I couldn't stop but think about the Kansas City Royals. You got a Royals God. hat on. Yeah. I got a Royals hat on. And man. we don't plan this, right? Yeah, like, no, no. We just show up. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I don't call you like... Hey man, what are you gonna wear tonight? You know, <laughs> I mean, we don't right. do that. You know, right. well, ironically, that's what I was gonna bring up, man. Uh, man, Royals, man, they doing man. it, man. They and I know we're not it, a sports man. podcast, everybody, so no, don't no. don't throw darts, okay? I mean, we're 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 but we cheer for the home team, just we, like we most home of teamers, y'all do, we right? home teamers, home team, home team, hashtag man. home team. You already know, you seen yeah, that, Royals. Um, but Royals are looking good, man. Man, they've been knocking they they are it looking out, for real. Man. Like they're they're what they're over twenty games Shout in now. Out Royals. So uh, I'm uh, I'm excited, man. I'm hoping to get out there. Yeah. Well, I I I I was gonna go right. I was gonna go to a game, but I was kind of feeling shitty, man. You know, the, the other day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, man, I kind of had a pass on that. I but, hear you. But I'm thinking before. May the Fourth be with you might be the game. It might be, man. I don't know. We'll see. It might be. It might be. But uh, tonight. Yeah. We have. We got a good one, man. A good one. We have an outstanding man. This dude is a hustler. Man, uh, I don't even know. Like, what's a one word description of this individual? Hustler. Man, I think know? I think that's it with all capital letters, man. Hustler, man, just go get her. You know, like uh Yeah. So man, he's just doing we, it. Man. We 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 just gotta do her. You, you know, know he, I, I I met this guy, you know, I went and I, and I met him, jail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, you know, we had a cup of coffee and we just kind of just sat and talked for a little bit. Yeah. And I was like, man, hold on, hold on, hold on, man. <laughs> <laughs> man, we 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 got to get you on this, man, because yeah. everything this this young man has done here, man. Yes, well, sir. Well, you know what? Let's let's just let's just do it, man. Let's do let's it. Let's just do it, man. So we going we going to interrupt our guest oh, yeah. this evening and by interrupt, we mean introduce our guest. Yeah. None other than the young hustler himself, oh. Mr. Jonathan Pitayo, man. What is up? What's up, What's brother? What's up, guys? Thank you for having me. I yeah. appreciate it. Yeah, man. Love the introduction and, you know, you're hyping me up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was, hey, we were setting up and he's like, has his phone out. And I'm like, dude, you could take selfies. You yeah. can take do whatever pictures, you want, man. Do what you got to do, dude, man. Hey, you, you know, promote it. Yeah. Pro- promote, promote, <laughs> yeah, promote. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of promotion, man, tell us, man, where are we right now? All right. Well, we're here in KCK, Minnesota Avenue and 12th Street, my office, um, Viva Promo and Print Office. Mm-hmm. Um, just a little bit about me. I own a promo and print company. Okay. okay. Um, is that the stuff in front yes, of you? Yes. So this is, you know, kind of the stuff I do. Um, leather koozies, hats, T-shirts, golf balls, promotional products. Yeah. But I guess I would cut myself short if I was just to say promotional products. Yeah. Because lots of people are like, when I introduce myself, they're like, hey, what do you do? I'm like, oh, I own Viva Promo and Print Company, and I do real estate, and I do this. And they're like, whoa, 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 man. They're like, there has to be one word. And they're like, entrepreneur. 
you're an entrepreneur. Ah, okay. and after that, right, right. that's what I run with. So yeah. I'm an entrepreneur. Well, where, where we come from, entrepreneur, man, you a hustler. Uh, there we go. Hustler. Hustler. There I mean, go. That's, that's, that's go. another term. <laughs> I, w- I mean, I'm, I'm coming. I know people are watching and like, oh, he a hustler. Yeah, there you yeah, go. Yeah, yeah, we're just a hustler. Go, yeah. go get it. How do you yeah. say that word in Spanish, Jonathan? What, which one? Hustler. Hustler? Uh, I guess, ah, que se podría decir? <laughs> There's a lot of words. I'm putting you on the spot. Yeah, yeah. Put me on the spot. Better let's you do, than me, bro, because I, mean, I wouldn't even know. Maybe Chingon. Chingon. Oh, Chingon. 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 That would translate to everybody. Chingon. Chingon. Shout out, shout out, Dusineo, man. Dusineo, man. Shout out, man. Yeah, there we go. I got uh, that from her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, that's what's up, Jonathan, yeah, man. man. Um, yeah, thank you for joining us here on Interrupt KC, Jonathan, man. You know, one of the things that we try to get across with our audience, man, we're all about capturing stories. Capturing yeah. the story of people, man, yeah. you know. So I think if we can, before we get to all your entrepreneur, yeah. you know, hustler ambition that you Everything are today, I mean, that rooted from something. So Correct. let's let's talk about where are you from exactly? Where where did you grow up? What did that look like? So I was born in Kansas City, Missouri, uh, 2003, um, currently 20 years old at the okay. Truman Center. 20 wow. years old. 20 yes. years old. 20 years old. So what, what is that? 2003? Four, three, three, three. So yeah, my God. I turn twenty-one next month. We're so. talking to somebody born in the two thousands, <laughs> man. man. I'm old. I'm that? officially old, D. Rod. <laughs> How about that, man? You, man, I could be your your abuelo, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I guess. So. Yeah, I could be, <laughs> I could be your abuelo, man. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, go ahead. So man. yeah, I was born in Kansas City, raised in Belton, Missouri, so further south. Okay, from yeah, yeah, yeah. About thirty-five minutes south. Yeah. So nice. yeah, I went to high school there, um, middle school, elementary, everything. Is it, are you only child or what? No. So I grew up, uh, my mom's side. So my parents split up when I was three. Okay. And my mom, we have three siblings, my brother, Alan, Allison, and Juliet. Mm. And then on my dad's side, I could go on. We got a total of man. nine siblings oh, on that man. side. I'm That's the oldest great. though, but yeah. You, are, you, are you, you're Latino clearly. Correct. But what, what, yeah. What's your. So my dad's from Este Querétaro. Okay. In Mexico. Uh-huh. And then my mom, Parra Chihuahua. In, uh, Mexico, okay. in Mexico, yeah. So I'm okay. not sure if you guys know. So those full places. 100% yeah. Mexican. Yes, there we go. Okay. Yep, yep. I was born That's here. why you got a lot of relatives, bro. There you go. I mean, I'm just saying, you know, I mean, we're, we're Mexican. We got a lot of, we got big families. There we go. So it's yeah. total you, nine brothers, sisters with your dad. Yep. Right? He Correct. remarried or whatever. And yep. then your other siblings with your mom is three. Yeah, there's three. Yeah. So that's a total of 13. Yeah. Yeah. So it's 13 of us. I'm the oldest. And I, oh, I told my dad, the youngest right now, is I want to say six months. Oh, wow. And I told him, hey, when are you planning on stopping? You know? <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, he's like, nope, no, I'm going to keep going. Yeah, I'm like, all yeah. right. That sounds like somebody I know, man. <laughs> <laughs> sounds like a few people I know. There sounds like go. somebody I know, man. <laughs> well, that's what's up, man. So um, you went, so did you live with your mom or your dad? I didn't. So I grew up in Belton, Missouri with my mom. Your mom, okay. She was a single mother, okay. uh, four children. Okay. Um, and we grew up there, kind of moved back and forth between Martin City and Belton. Not sure if you guys know where Martin City's at. Yeah. But a little bit north of uh, Belton. Yeah. Grew up there, lived with my grandma for a bit. Um, so the story is really, you know, she got split up when I was three years old. Right. Kind of had my brother. She was pregnant at the time, mm. actually. Mm. My dad walked away for whatever reasons, sure. you know, they some uh, disputes. Yeah. And... I mean, she was just, you know, hey, I, mom, you know, come help me and, you know, try right, to raise right. us, work, you know, right. kind of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so you saw her, do, you saw yes. her just going. Do, right, making, hustling. Yeah, hustling. Yeah. hustling what what yeah. does she do? So my mom now, she just got a job at KC Toy. She's uh, okay. she's uh, bilingual, like, uh, receptionist, oh, kind of nice. helping with fulfilling orders. So, nice. yeah. But originally she was working at a uh, Mexican restaurant, Camachos, as a server. Okay. Yeah, That's so, over in uh, 135th Street? Yeah, so there's one 135th and like 35 Highway in Olathe, yeah. and then there's one 119th in Overland Park, which was where oh, she okay. worked. Okay. Oh, yeah. you're talking about... Uh, Camachos, yeah. Machos. Los yeah. Machos or something like that. Yeah, no, it cam- got to K. Yeah, oh. K Machos. Oh, K Machos. K Machos. There you go. K Machos. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. there you go. Camachos. Yeah, yeah. Camachos. that's, that's, ah, yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, should have done See, both. See, man, yeah. I'm, I'm a, I need a, I need a, oh, man, come give on. me some tequila, D-Rod. Yeah, yeah, no, uh, no, so that's what's up, man. Um, 
You said you're the oldest sibling? Yes, yeah, so I'm the oldest, born 2003, my dad and mom's first child. So, yeah, okay. oldest on both sides. Wow. Yeah. And you went to Belton High School. I did. Wait, so what year did you actually graduate? So I graduated in like 21. last year? <laughs> right, yeah, essentially, yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> so 21. I graduated in 21. Yeah. Wow. So three years ago. Wow. Uh, yeah. yeah. So you're clearly, man, you got this, you know, printing promo company. That's yeah. one hustle that you yeah. have. Um Oh, man, like where'd that start? Well, yeah, how how oh, let, let's 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 retract a little yeah, bit, yeah, yeah. right? Okay, so we met your family, correct? Your mom and dad, yes. Um, at what time you're 20, yeah? How long you been in business, man? Eight eight years old, there you go, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right? No, like so, when, when did that get started, brother? So, my whole life, I was surrounded, you know, my mom was a hustler, right? right you right. know, she was trying to, you know, kind of yeah. sacarnos adelante, you know, try to, mm-hmm. you know, go forward with us. Um, during that time, she had two other kids. She remarried. Okay. Uh, she had two more kids, which was my two little sisters. Right. And then at one point, you know, they also split up. So then she had four kids as a single mom. Oh, okay. So she had to, you know, you know, Keep figure it out. Right, Keep right. On right. Going, you got man. four kids. And, you know, I think, you know, my businesses came from with her kind of being like, hey, these are your little siblings. You got to take care of them. Uh, yeah. They don't know. Yeah. Right, and so right. I was kind of like. Watch out for them. Right. Do everything. Put on the spot and like figure it out, you know, right. whether they need something protected or, you know, cook, and whatever. And is this in anything. like growing up or growing just up. like so, middle school or high school? So this was growing up, just like growing elementary. Up. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You know, kind of being like, hey, you got to do this. Man. Big brother. Right. And then it's just like, hey, I, well, I don't know either. Yeah. But she was just kind of like, well, do it. Yeah. And I was like, okay. Figure it out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Figure it out. So that's where that came from, I feel like. And then going to middle school, we moved to Martin City for a year. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, was there, tried it, tried, you know, living on our own with four kids. Ultimately didn't work out, you know, lots of hardships. Right. So we moved back in with my grandparents. Okay. So essentially, you know, my grandparents would take care of us. And my mom was like, hey, I'm working. I'm right. trying to help pay bills. Right, right. You know, put food on table, whatever is needed. So, yeah. Well, I mean, I couldn't imagine, man. I mean, being a single parent of one kid is hard. Being a single parent of four? Yeah. yeah. Holy shit, yeah. man. And I mean, I, shout out. What's your mom's name? Elvia. 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 Shout yeah. out, Elvia, man. There you go, mom. Yeah, will she watch out. this? Yeah, she will watch this. I'll be sharing. I'm like, hey, yeah. mom, watch it. There's yeah. a shout out. <laughs> and, and, and your dad was in your life, too, though, right? He was once I turned 13. 13. So it was a little, little afterwards. But uh, basically, you know, my mom kind of instilled in me kind of, hey, you know, you got to keep working, keep mm-hmm. trying to do what you want to do in right. life to get, you know, to go forward. Because yeah. the way she put it was like, if you don't do it for yourself, nobody will. Yeah. So, yeah. So, I was like, all right, I guess yeah. I got to do it. If you're hungry, you got to make that. You got to make there them you go. chicharrons, well, man. There there you go. What was the first? Well, I mean, I know we're going to get to your businesses. Yeah. But what was the first little hustle you started doing? Okay. So this was, uh, I want to say, middle school. Uh-huh. It was fixing iPhones. Ah, so I, I a smart one, right? Yeah. <laughs> so essentially, all these ideas came from need. So my mom would take care of food, you know, the hand me down clothes, thrift store, right? But I see kids, you know, with their stuff. You know, right. I didn't have an iPhone, right? So if a kid would be like, oh, "I'm breaking my phone. It's broken. It's trash," I'd be like, "Let me get it. Like, just give it to me." Oh. They're like, "What do you want it for?" I was like, "Just hand it over." I keep it, you know. I try to like, you know. They would just give you the phone, right? Because it was done. it was broken. Anyway. It was broken. Oh, gotcha. So they would just kind of like, all right, you want my trash, you know? And then I'd fix it up. I'd order parts. Huh. <laughs> so like, are you talking about like if the screen was cracked, screen back, battery buttons? In, yep, buttons. It just didn't work. It didn't work. So I would kind of just experiment. You know, YouTube was take my friend, apart. and just take it apart. And kind of get going on it. Yeah. What would you charge him for that, man? So I was charging students at one point. It was, I want to say, like 50 bucks. Okay. The screen was maybe like $15, $20. You on. were cheap, oh, yeah. bro. Yeah, I, was, I know. I was just like, let's get it. Man, I, I wish I could go back in time. I'd be like, man, Jonathan, we need to connect in oh, early man. 120, man. <laughs> yeah, man. You know how many iPhones I threw away? Right. Yeah, there you go. So that was in middle school. So that's where it started from. And then I kind of got a taste for it. And you know, obviously it was nothing crazy, you know, just whoever had a phone. Hey, right. I'll fix it. What's the most you made doing I think, that? I think it was honestly maybe 200 bucks. 200? But that was like a span of a year. So yeah. like it was people knew, but it wasn't nothing like, yeah. okay. Yeah, like, but, like once every couple of months. Right. With the broken, I mean, <laughs> right. not everybody broke the, broke the phone. Man, you know yeah. what? 
If you would have known my kids back then, man, <laughs> that was single one of my kids. I mean, do you still hey, fix man. them today? Because that might be another one. I you wish. Could do. I wish. I stopped real, fixing right? them a while ago. Yeah, yeah. Just because, like, the technology got too crazy. I was like, yep, nope. I'm oh, out of business. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, out of business. Right, right, yeah. right. Yeah. So then what's next after that, man? So then after that, you know, I kind of got into, uh, you know, I'd like to say uh, Vive. Honestly, okay. that started in 2019. 2019. So that was, you know, kind of fast forward a couple of years going through middle school, you know, uh, you know, lots of transitions, my stepdad leaving, uh, moving back to Belton with my grandparents, you know, yeah, yeah. kind of being uh, taken care of by my grandma, grandpa, uncle and aunt, which I consider the main core who kind of, you know, uh, molded me to sure. who I am today. Yeah, yeah. So they kind of, you know, always oversaw what I was doing. And then from there, I got my first like job which was with my uncle. He owns a painting company oh, okay. uh, called Rowan's Painting. Okay. And What's your uncle's name? Let's give a shout out. Yeah, Raul Felix. I owe him Raul lots Raul of credit. Felix. There we go. Shout there out. Go. Theo, uh, right? Yeah, by Theo, yeah. yeah. Raul Felix, yeah. So um, he gave me the first opportunity. Okay. He was like, you know, I would tell him, be like, hey, man, I want some Jordans. I want some Nikes. And he goes, well, I could give them to you, but you could also work for them. Ah. So to me, that was like, Okay, yeah. what, what do I got to do, you know? Yeah. yeah. And he took me with him on one day, you know, kind of mowing lawns, painting, you know, just typical stuff. Yeah, working. R- working, yeah. And, you know, I would work, you know, eight-hour days, maybe 10, 12, depending on the situation. Right. And essentially, there was a time that I got paid, and it was like maybe, you know, I wasn't doing too much, but it was something. Yeah. He's like, here's 100 bucks. And I was like, or 80 bucks. And I was like, what? <laughs> Like that's it. It's like not even enough for like. You know how much I sweat today. (laughs) Jonathan, I could tell you some stories about working for uncles, bro. They don't pay for shit. Right there, right now. All right. So yeah, so you didn't pay me too much, and I was like, that's it. I'm like, not even for shoes or you know or a Nike hoodie. Yeah. Yeah. And like you know, uh, set. And uh, he was like, well, that's life. Yeah. He's like, you sometimes don't have enough, but you got to keep working. Wow. So you gotta you know, make it work or something, right, right? Exactly. Just figure it out. And fast forward maybe a month later, I wanna say. Wow. A month later, we went out to a job kinda I wanna say Baser, Kansas, or yeah. towards yeah. Leavenworth. Yeah. And I was out there working and I started thinking. I was oh. like, you know what? I don't have enough money for the name brand clothes I wanted. Yeah. Uh, so then I was like, Well, what can I do? Yeah. I was like, Well, I have X amount of money. I think it was maybe like a hundred bucks or 120 yeah. after spending all on chips and snacks. Yeah. Right. I was That's like, important. Right. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Dockies, High school, man. Man. There you go. Dockies, yeah. rancheritos, <laughs> you know, hot Cheetos. So I was like, okay, what do I got to do? I was like, well, let me create my own, you know, kind of like clothing. Okay. I was really artistic at the time. I, I yeah. to this day, I still kind of draw. Right. And so my thing was like, well, let me create my own. And so he would see me on the breaks we would have start sketching. He's like, what are you drawing? I was like, oh, I'm creating like a logo. And he's like, what? Like, hmm. like a logo? Para que? You know, like, yeah, yeah, what's yeah. it for? I was like, I don't know yet, but I'm drawing. Yeah. And this was on our way back and forth, breaks, lunch. Yeah. I just opened my sketchbook and draw. Wow. So that's kind of where it started. And you were drawing a lot, like Vive? So I was drawing Vive. So wow. at first it was just sketches. And then after a while, I just started drawing Vive. Mm-hmm. I knew off the bat I wanted my name to be Vive. Like, there's no doubt. Right. That was the name. But what, then, what made you think of that name? So Vive was kind of like to live. That was right, the original, right. you know, it was, yeah. was going right. to be a clothing brand, you know, right. to live, like Vivir Tu Vida. That was right. the thing. And so I kind of bounced back ideas from my uncle when he was driving back home to Belton. And he goes, I was like, I'm having trouble with the logo. He goes, well, he's like, what gives life? Que da vida. Mm. And I was like, oh, he's like water, sun, trees. Right, right, right. I started sketching, right. and I was like, well, I, I went to Florida, I want to say that same year, right before, and I really was impressed by the palm trees. Right. So I was like, you know what? Let me do some sort of tree. And it ended up being just like a little palm tree. Wow. That's it. Yeah. So I, it's not that one, but I drew some other ones. Close similar. to it. Close to it. Yeah. I ended up drawing that one later on, but yes. Yeah. Yeah. So it was a palm tree, and it, it just went off with it. Vive. Yeah. yeah. I love it, man. I love it. So you created the logo, yep. you know, and 
you're still working for your deal, but right. you're still in high school too. Right. Yeah. I mean, man, yes. you you got a lot going on already. <laughs> like, you're are you still fixing hard. iPhones or you know, no, no, no. you gave up? Okay. All right. All right. Got you. So so then t- talk about that transition from okay, I created a logo, mm-hmm. which you initially you thought sound like you were going to put on some clothes, right? You that, know. Yeah. But but then you decided actually I'll just create a company that. Mm-hmm puts logos on clothes, their logos on clothes, right? So the way it first started was it was a clothing brand. So my oh, okay. current name is Vive Brand Co. Because okay. it was a clothing brand. Okay. So um, essentially was once I took that idea and I drew it up, my whole purpose of this brand was I had uh, no money for brand name clothes. Mm. So it was fulfilling a need. That's where my idea came from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, hey, I want to fit in too. Make my own. Right. So I was like, I, I can't afford Nike or Adidas, so I'm going to create Vive. Yeah. I wore it to school one day. Yeah. You know, and this this is how I made it at the time because I didn't know anything. Yeah. Puffy paint from like Joanne's yeah, at Walmart, yeah, yeah. $3. And then a sticker, like a vinyl sticker. Yeah. And I just like, lo planche. I uh-huh. put it on, on my chest and called it good. Did you I, do you have a photo of you wearing that? So I do. I have oh, lots man. of pictures. You got, you got to give us a photo. <laughs> yeah, we got to get that. I got man. lots of things. I, I keep everything. But essentially, I wore it to school. Walked in, you know, like, okay, you know, it wasn't perfect. You know, of course, it's puffy paint, human error. Right. And I wore it, and some kids were like, hey, where'd you get that? <laughs> and it's like, oh, it's my brand. I created it. Yeah. And then after a while, they're like, well, uh, I want one. How much? Yeah. Mm. And I was just like, paused. I was like, you want one? Yeah. <laughs> You're wearing Nike. I, wear wanna... I made this for me. <laughs> right, they yeah. just try to rock it, man. Something right. different, right? Right. Because I want to wear what they're wearing. They're wearing yeah. Nike, you know. Uh, be like, hey, man, I trade you. <laughs> right. Yeah, 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 at that yeah. point, I should have said that. Yeah. But it's. I kind of paused and was like, okay. I was like running numbers real quick. You know, I was like, okay, uh, sure. Um, $25, the, mm. the hoodie. And they're like, okay, I'll, I'll, I got cash right now. And I was like, oh, like, he's willing to do it right now. Yeah. No thinking. So I was like, okay. And I just kind of ran on with it. And right. I went home and, you know, you know, I obviously saw, like, one person order. And I was like, well, I need a, you need to do it. Stop so did you, roll. did you go to Walmart and get you a hoodie and so, just started doing like that? Yeah, so it was essentially Walmart, you know, buying hoodies. They were $8 at the time, I want to say. Yeah. Puffy paint, you know, $3. That's a bargain, though. Bottle. Yeah, right. I yeah. wish we could get it for that now. Hey. <laughs> Hoodie's a hoodie, man. Right. Yeah. So I got the $8 hoodie, $3 Puffy paint, and then some vinyl uh, decals. Wow. So at the time, I didn't, like, I didn't have a machine for it. Mm. So I'd have them make it for me there, like one-offs. Yeah. And they would just make it, and then, you know, you'd run with it. So, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Man, how about that? Man, that's a salute, man. That, yeah. Hey, man, that's, that's salute, for real. Man. Let's salute, salute Jonathan, man. Yeah, man. I know you. I know yeah, you. Yeah, hey, we, we're not doing tequila with Jonathan because he's underage, everybody. So right. Calm down. Yep. <laughs> Actually, that whole thing's full of tequila over there. There man. you go. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't nobody got to know. <laughs> no, um. That's incredible, man. Yeah, I mean, that's badass, man. I, you know, I've heard of people doing similar things. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, hell, man, you, you know, we talked to Juan Moya and Moya talked about how when he was in school, he started off drawn on uh, jean jackets. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. So he was, And yeah, that's where he that's where, where he was putting his art. And that's wow. how he first became known as yeah. an artist in the yeah. in the city, you know, yeah. in the neighborhood. Really. Right. Yeah. Remember that? Yeah, man. A lot of people were doing that too. Wow. So you know? just hustling in high school, mm-hmm. man. Yeah. You know, but but you know, shout out to you, man, for for kind right. of stepping out of your shell and doing yeah. that, man. Right, right. So then, okay, so you start making these puffy shirts and hoodies and all that stuff. Correct. What's the next step, man? What you do after that? So after that, you know, after one order came, lots lots came. Point wow. is, I walked out of school with three hundred bucks every other day. Wow, it was that like right? that. Well, so, how much were you selling the? Like, how much so, was a shirt? So, it was so it was just hoodies. Oh, it just started a, off hoodies. How much was a hoodie? Twenty five dollars. Twenty five. So bucks. you went, so eight dollars. You bought them for eight. Yeah. And then you pu- you did your work. Yeah. So you so could, you made seventeen dollars. Right, you can say essentially. Take. Yeah. So I was walking okay. with uh, with money every other day, you know? I yeah. mean, $300 every other day. Right. You were selling some hoodies, bro. Right, man. Yeah, you so was getting you some thakis, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 employees was like, what is this kid doing, man? Is he reselling these hoodies? Yes, yeah. he right. is. That's the way yes. to do it, man. So it was crazy because I remember the teachers flagged me for walking in with duffel bags. <laughs> like, wow. I, had a, I had duffel bags, mochilas, anything. Yeah. Wow. I could store hoodies. I'd, like, shove it in and sell it during, like, passing periods. Wow. Yeah, so it was 
it got did, to did that they point. they try to get you in trouble over that? No, they actually kind of, they didn't support did, did it. You, did you give a teacher one, make one for a teacher? No, they realized it and they were like, who's who's making all these hoodies that everyone has like a different color and, you wow. know, and they eventually, they knew it was me. Yeah. But they did, I thought that I was going to get in trouble. They were going to be like, hey, it's yeah. not a business. You can't sell, you know. Right. But are, you fr- are you still friends with any of those kids from high school? So I am. So now when they come into my office, it's like a full circle moment. Oh, right? yeah. They're like, yeah. They're like, wow, man. Like, you, you made you. it. Yeah. I remember when you showed me a Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> you know? They probably still got it. They still do. They walk in with it sometimes. Wow. So is that right? Yes, they will. That's that's yeah. awesome, man. So I that mean, was that you know, moment. it's not that long ago. Man. No, it's like, not. Yeah. Yeah. I probably, man, I got a hoodie 20 years old, man. Yeah. Hey, this hoodie. Yeah. This hoodie, let me see. I have a picture of me wearing this hoodie in like 2008. Oh, wow. Yeah, man. And, wow. you know, it's. It looks good. It's because I'm a Jayhawk. I'm a, I'm a KU guy. Yes. But it's because it's red and it just says Kansas and blue on it. Right. And no. it's different. Yeah. Every every Jayhawk hoodie I've seen is always like blue yeah, with, they got with the yellow, Jayhawk on yeah, it and yellow. Yeah, and yeah. I'm like, no, nah, I need that one. And yeah, I, I would just rock that it, one. You know? yeah. yeah. Anyway, that's what's up, man. So what happened after that? You now you're you're slanging these hoodies and you know, I mean that that flame or that light went off right. and you're like, okay, right. I need to make this like legit, legit. You start getting some equipment? Right. No. So that was in 2019, right? right? So I started, you know, I did get equipment. I went to Joanne's and got like a, a cricket. So I can oh, now make right. these puff, uh, these little sticker, vinyl iron-on stickers yeah. oh, for yeah. my house because it was lots of orders. So I had to get that. And I was still doing puffy paint. And the problem with that is, you need lots of room because you're essentially going with puffy paint, literally manually going in and doing it. I'd put a light stencil in the sleeve that I bought on Amazon. It was like my first investment, yeah. 20 bucks because yeah. I was hand drawing them. And essentially from that point on, I would just trace them. But there was like 25 at a time, 20. And my grandma's living room wow. was full of hoodies Shit everywhere. everywhere right? If there was like a little spot, I would put it right on. Like, really? It had a dry, right? Right. It had a dry for at least, I would said like a day. Yeah. So I'd turn on the abanico, the fan, yeah, yeah, yeah. and she'd be like, why you got the fan on for so long? I'm <laughs> like, free on me. Yeah. And she'd yell at me. I was like, hey, I'm drying these. And she'd like, see, that was really like focused. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, and she'd make sure I was doing good in school because I was a straight A student my my whole high school. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I was 3.8 GPA. Like I did good. Yeah. So I, I was juggling yeah, lots of yeah. things. And Essentially, it was just that, you know, kind of bought my first machine, which was my cricket machine. And then from there, kind of buying a bigger light pad wow. and everything. And I didn't know screen printing, which is not what I mainly do, uh-huh. existed. Mm. To me, I was like, there has to be something yeah. where I could. Something easier, an right, easier way, right? A stencil that if I put paint over, it'll paint right through it. Right. So what I did was I ordered a blank stencil. I hand carved with a like exacto knife. Wow. My logo. It didn't look perfect. Yeah, yeah. My logo. And then I was like, well, let me paint over it with like Home Depot paint. I am so serious. I have all this at home. <laughs> and I did it. <laughs> I believe you. And I pick it up and it just it doesn't even look like a logo. It's a blob. Oh, and I realized man. I was like, no, that dang ain't it. gonna work. Yeah, that ain't gonna work. And then eventually I kind of like did some research and the thing was. It was like a theory of screen printing. Right. The concept was there. I just didn't know it existed. Right. Yeah, right. Yeah. I had no idea. Yeah. Wow. And then yeah. wheels are turning, man. Like right. you knew you knew yeah. what you wanted to do, but right. didn't see it yet, man. Correct. Correct. So so did you graduated clearly, right? I yes. mean you graduated, you're yeah. a smart kid, you so, know. Yeah. College was never. You're like, no, I'm a hustler, baby. I gotta go make this money. <laughs> yeah. well, yeah. what, talk talk about that a little bit. So I, again, that was in 2019. So yeah. I was a COVID kid. Yeah, yeah. 2020 right. was, yeah, you know, true. the yeah, pandemic. Yeah, yeah. March 13th. Keep in mind, I was selling hoodies up until 2020. Right. So March 13th came. That was the last day of school that we didn't know at the time. We thought it was two weeks. Point is, all my sales stopped. Yeah. Because there was no You didn't have an online store yet? No, not oh, at the time. Oh, man. I wish. It would have yeah. kept going. But point is, it stopped. Yeah. And so I had a, a real problem, you know, a real world problem. But I was a kid, you know, that's not the yeah. biggest deal in the world. But I was like, man, I was making money. Now I'm not. Yeah. You know, I'd still reach out to these kids. But since there was no interaction, they're like, well, what do I need one? You know, yeah, they're, they're no stuck need. in the house. Right. Yeah. So 
that's where originally, you know, I was like, crap, what do I do? Mm. You know, and I tried targeting these businesses. Like I started working for a concrete kind of, co- a concrete company upstairs called R and R Concrete. My right. dad owns that company actually. Okay, okay. I Who interned does? for them. My dad, oh, Rene okay. Pitayo, yeah. So he owns that concrete company, and essentially, um, you know, I, I graduated early because yeah. we didn't have school. It was online. Right. right. So um, you know, I was still doing my academics. You know, making sure I did you know my my homework. You know, lessons, Zoom. You know, everything was really new. We didn't right. know what was going to happen. Right. And so I was like, well, what can I do with this idea? I'm not stopping. And so my thing was like, I need to focus on businesses. Oh. Yeah. So that kind of went that way. You know, I was interning for them, selling this stuff on the side, maybe like, hey, you have a roofing company? Let me do your T-shirts. You know, kind of like that. And um, I also like, you know, was still in high school still. So I was still doing my stuff. And I, you know, fast forward, you know, I want to say, um, I want to say a year I was interning for my dad's concrete company. Right. Mm. So I was kind of taking their sales tactics uh, and what they were doing again. I was just kind of like, Hey, go do this. And I was like, all right, I'll go do it. But I was still doing this on the side, trying to be like, how can I change my business? I right, want to sell. Right. I no longer talk to these students cause you know, it was COVID. It was yeah. all over zoom. So essentially I saw they were talking to businesses. Yeah. So I was like, why can't I? So, you know, we're located in KCK on 6th Street at the time. Yeah. And I was literally like on a lunch break, I'd go down the street and knock on a door. Wow. Hey, I own this company. Uh, I'd like to do your printing. Yeah. How'd that go? And lots of people were like, hey, like uh, the owner's not here or, or yeah, let me, you, what's your name? You know, or I didn't even hey, have cards. Hey, kid, are you in school? Or? Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, well, did you get some shit like that where people so, was like, man, get out of here. So of most people were like, you know, do you have a card? Of course, right. I didn't even have a card, yeah. you know. And so I was like, no, but I can leave you my number. And they were nice enough to yeah. be like, yeah, man, leave it here. We'll reach out. You know, I ultimately didn't get nothing, but sure. I was still trying yeah, to. Yeah. So essentially, you know, COVID kind of, you know, took on that path, you know, kind of dry spot. But after a while, I did get calls. Mm-hmm. You know, somebody took a chance and they're yeah. like, hey. Who, who was the first customer? I want to say the first one. <sighs> Got to give him a shout Okay, so besides my dad, my dad, of yeah, course, yeah, yeah. he oh, let me course. do his uniforms. Of course. I'm trying to remember. I want to say it was a roofing company. I don't remember the That's exact right. name, but it was it was a roofing company. Yeah. Yeah. And they took a chance. Yeah. They're like, yeah, let's do it. They're like, I want 80 t-shirts. Are they still down the street there? Uh, my dad's company? No, the roofing place. No, so I don't even know how they got my number. Okay. Point is, somebody found out. I right. was doing social media stuff, yeah, so yeah. maybe that way. Right. But they reached out. They said 80 shirts. 80 shirts. So obviously I had no equipment back to where I had. I had a cricket machine. So I was like, well, someone wants to place 80 shirts. What do I do? (laughs) So I went to these printing businesses and I talked to them and I was like, hey, um, I don't know how this sounds, but I want to do what you do, but I can't. Right. And they were like, like, what are you talking about? Point is, I was like, well, I want to kind of like resell your stuff essentially. And they were like, no, man, get out of here. Like, you know, we don't, we don't work like that. Mm, it's yeah. First, no. Another time. Another time. Third time, I finally found somebody to be like, yeah, I'll do your order. Like, you're, you got to make money, right? I was like, yeah. He was like, okay, I'll do it for X cost. You sell it for this, you wow. make your money. And to me, that was like a, like a cheat code. Yeah. I was yeah. like. You're a middleman, but nobody knows. Right. Yeah. So I was like, okay, I'll do the 80 shirts. Yeah. And it just kind of snowball effect again, you know, kind of one business at a time. Yeah, wow. Man. Yeah. And. That was an early model you took on, right? Correct. That was yeah. an early model. So that was in twenty twenty. So how long? Yeah. How long did that last? So that was in twenty twenty. It lasted maybe a, I want to say four months. What's the biggest order you did in that time? I want to say because eighty shirts is a big that's, order. That's a I pretty think. big shirt. Yeah, that's a big order. Um, I want to say maybe a hundred twenty, but okay. it wasn't self performed. Maybe self performed myself was fifty. Yeah. Because I did eventually create a screen. Sure. Like I did sure. do screen printing sure. in, in-house after a while, but I did it with cheap materials. Like I grabbed this, you know, you're supposed to use this mesh mm-hmm. and burn it into the sunlight. Mm-hmm. And I did it in my shower. My grandma was yelling at me because I had all this blue <laughs> ink everywhere. Hell She's yeah. like, what are you doing? Yeah. And then I put it in the sun, you know, to let it dry. Yeah. And then I was printing them in the backyard. 
yeah. you know, and squeegeeing them out, you know, and it was all off center. They looked all bad. I couldn't even <laughs> heat them right. <laughs> what's your, awesome, what's your grandma's name, man? Uh, este Elizabeth. Uh, Lisa Cedillo. Bet? Yeah. Um, Betty, Lisa yeah. My Shout grandma. Out, you know, I love you, grandma. Yeah. So, yeah, she she wow. never doubted me. Yeah. I'll say that. But yeah. she grandma's, like, mad. grandma's <laughs> generally don't doubt. It was a it was a bunch of que la chingala. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so <Ken is assembly. laughs> but but you, you don't play with their bathrooms, though. Right. Yeah, yeah no, She was, oh, living. Hey, all over the living room, everything. Man. All over the place, okay. But yeah. you go to the bio, man. No, man. I know. Yeah. So that's where, you know, I was kind of doing that. That was my biggest order at the time. Right. But I did that for a couple of months. Okay. And then ultimately, you know, people started calling. You know, people started hearing about me yeah. one way or another. Just word of mouth Word type of stuff. mouth, yep. brother. Social media. Seen, yeah. And at the time, I was still knocking on doors uh, here on Minnesota Avenue, Central. Yeah. And at that time, you got some cards? Yeah, I did have some cards. Yeah, I did kind of right, become go, more man. professional. Yeah. Right, here kinda you go. Kind of seeing what my dad was doing with his company. Yeah. I just applied to mine. Yeah. And so I was knocking because I'm, I'm from Belton, so I'm driving every day, you right. know, to Belton. Yeah from Belton to Kansas City, Kansas. But I was doing it here because it was during lunch breaks or after work. It's like, hey, let me knock on the door and wow. see if it works. So I was doing that for about six months, you know, post-COVID, right. yeah. That's incredible, man. Yeah, that's badass, man. Yeah. That's incredible. I, I'm i like, you know, to, to first of all, do you understand? I mean, you you understand, Jonathan. <laughs> I mean, you're you're a young hustler. Yeah. I mean, I, I know mean, kids. Age, you're man. I know kids ten years older than you. That wouldn't do what you just said. Yeah. Yeah. Go knock on a business oh, to, yeah. to, to to say, hey, I want to do what you do, but I need to make money off of it. Yeah, I don't know yeah. how to do it. Right. You know, like I know people my yeah. age that they wouldn't do even it. do that. Yeah. They're yeah. like, oh, I ain't doing that. That's, yeah. that's scary shit to right. me. Yeah. Like, no, man. Like, you got to get out of your shell, man, right. and go do that. Right. Right. So essentially, it kind of came back from my uncle and everybody you know my family yeah. telling me like if you want to do something you got to go do it mm. yeah, no yeah, one's yeah. going to do it for you yeah. mm. you know um and you kept that in your mind bro right right yeah because i was like well I'd, I'd like to do it but i can't tell anybody no one will do it i gotta do it yeah right. so yeah. i kind of just ran with that that's what's yeah, up man, man. Yeah. yeah i respect that man yeah 100 percent, man so when did you have like what was your biggest equipment purchase that got you away from the the kind of the middle the middleman. You know? So essentially, I from there I I bought you know my first printer. It was just like a regular just printer to print like uh, you know paperwork. Yeah. And then from there I bought a screen printing machine, a one head one. So that was like I want to say eighty bucks. Mm. To me, I was like, wow, like I'm making an investment. Yeah. yeah. You know, and I bought that. I bought an embroidery machine. Yeah. Like one of those like sewing ones. Like yeah. you can only do one at a time. Yeah. I want to say that was a thousand dollars. That one was like the real one. Like this is serious. Yeah. This is, this is gonna <laughs> You're get like, somewhere. okay, I'm doing this for real now. Because I was hiring people to do it, but I was like, I got to make all the money too that I'm paying them. Yeah. yeah. I did my first one and I was like, Oh God, this ain't that easy. <laughs> hey, nobody got to get this one. <laughs> yeah, so I, had a, I took on an order of like, I want to say like 50 like cats to embroider. Yeah. Or, uh, I want to say polos because I didn't have the ring at the time. Uh, polos. I was like, yeah, I got you. Yeah, no, I, I screwed up like five, six of them. And I was like, man, oh. you know, I was already taking losses. Yeah, yeah. And there ain't no take backs on those, right. man, nope. when you screw up on you those, right? Up, you screw up. So I was like, man, this ain't that easy. You know, I yeah. had the equipment, $1,000. I was losing money. Wow. I had to buy the polos and embroider them again. Wow. So to me, that was like crap. Like, you know, that's a big, for people, failure is like a huge thing. Yeah. But I was like, well, I got to, you know, I already committed to this. I got to do something. You got to learn it. Right. So I just kept modifying it, doing it. Uh, eventually, I couldn't do it. I had to take more of a loss and just have the middleman do it. I mean, uh, the guy that was doing the it for person. me. I had to be the middleman. I, so, you know, just hearing you talk about it, man, did you did you go into this like, this is a big business for me in the future? It didn't sound like it. No, That's why I asked no, that. It sounded like something you just like doing. Yeah. So I like drawing, right? It came from that. Right. You know, I like creating things. I was very crafty as a little kid. Yeah. You know, when I, when I was a kid, I want to say uh, maybe five or six, my grandma worked, uh, not my grandma, my aunt worked at a bank, Wendy Moracedillo. Shout out, right? I can't forget <laughs> oh, her. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, she worked at a bank and she would get all the business cards of individuals and businesses. Yeah. She'd bring them home, right, to do, you know, paperwork. Yeah. Point is, she'd leave them somewhere and I'd organize them and like 
make something out of it. And, you know, I'd be like, hey, nobody mess with it. Mm. And this is when I was like five or six. Right. So I was always very like crafty. Mm -hmm. So my idea was like I was busy. You know, it wasn't, you know, I was making money. Right. I had a job with my dad. You know, it was an internship, you know, low right. pay, something. So when, okay, to go back a little bit, you're talking about that embroidery and you kept had to keep on going to that guy. Right. How long did that last so, until you figured it out and started so doing it, man? That lasted maybe about, I want to say a year with that guy. Okay. Uh, it lasted a year. So um, essentially, you know, I, I realized it's just too much. I was working over here, right. family, friends, and I was like, well, I, I'd like to self-perform. I can do some things, but not all of it. Right. Point is, I would still mess up stuff. Yeah. yeah, like it was constant mess ups. People were like, "Hey, man, you know, it looks good, but hey, this is kind of off." Yeah, and I was like, instead of saving money, I'm losing money. Right. So I just kept, you know, reaching out to him. Hey, can you do them? Can you do them? But you do it now. So now I do. Uh, it's like a fifty-fifty. We okay. do in-house stuff at another location we okay. have in Olathe. And then um, now I do like outsourcing, so I'll do some stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, right, right. yeah. Because I mean, you probably today are getting more than oh. eighty shirts. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, you're, yeah. I, I'm I, sure you give are. us a, give us a sample size of an order you're dealing with. So yeah, right well, now, yeah, what are you doing right now? So when D Rod was coming in, I was telling him, "Hey man, I gotta send this real quick. Yeah. I just I got an order for four hundred fifty shirts for." <laughs> Uh, Wyandotte County uh, Health Department. Nice. Deadline? And yeah, with the, the deadline, right? Yeah, they got a deadline for Friday. And I was like, okay, I took it on. But I was like, when I got that call and that email, yeah, I was like, what? Like, they're contacting me? Yeah. I had to go knock on these businesses yeah. that said no a couple yeah. years right, ago. Right. Now they're reaching out to me. So they want 450 shirts yes. next Friday. Next Friday. And we're, okay. and we're already like in the end of the week. Yeah. Man. Yeah. What one week turnaround. Yeah. We yeah, we could man. do it. So like I said, we were fifty fifty for a while, yeah. but it's starting to get to that point where I just can't self perform. I can't. So we're kind of right. more towards looking for vendors, looking for, hey, somebody that maybe has like, you know, an idea or they're like, Hey, I can make stuff like this, you know, hats or I have a machine. Oh, okay. Working with them, another small business that could be, you know, in my yeah. shoes or higher. And just kind of giving them an opportunity. So, so there's actually we know people who have those smaller businesses kind of in their houses, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, people might look at yes. that's kind of how we got some of these things. Yeah. But uh, how would they get a hold of you if they're looking, they're watching this, yes. and they're like, okay, I want to get in contact with Jonathan yeah. Pitayo. How do they do that? So I haven't promoted it too much, but point is um, I, I do want to start doing that. Because oh, my, my gotcha. thing was like uh, I started just like anybody else. It yeah. was just somebody with an idea. Yeah. Right. And so my way, you could contact me, you know, uh, my website, vivepromoprint.com. Okay. My phone number, um, you know, you guys will probably drop yeah. some stuff info. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's the way they can and get a hold of me, my email. Yeah. But essentially, you know, I want to, you know, I was in their shoes maybe three years ago, you could yeah, say. Right, yeah. right? Right, right? And I've gone to a good point now. It's all yeah. growth, brother. So it's kind of full growth, circle. Man. I yeah. want to help. I want to help. That's so, awesome, yeah. man. I love that. And, and the fact that you're so young still, yeah. <laughs> like, you're like, I want to help. I'm like, bro, what are you talking <laughs> Most people are <laughs> looking to help you. you know? right, yeah, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. And there right. it is, man. Yeah. So anybody in our audience that yes, are watching, sir. man, that are involved in things like this and things that Jonathan's doing, man, if you want a little reach out, man, give, yeah, I'd love give to. Jonathan a, a shout, man. Yes, I'd love to help. You know, there's always, there's no bad idea. Yeah. Whether you're making something, you know, there's somebody that, you know, that wants it. Absolutely. You know, any, sure, any amount. I, we, sure. You know, we could work with something. So you you said unified government, right? You're yep. doing that. Um, but I saw something that says you're also doing some school districts as well yes, and yes. other things. So talk about your client, like yeah. your client's base, I guess. What does that look like? Is it mostly, you know, because um, I, I kind of put like unified government school districts and stuff. Yeah. I saw an El Centro shirt, you know, yes, Centro, like these yeah. are these are like nonprofit you know, government organizations. Yeah. You know, is that mostly your clientele or are you doing also a lot of businesses as well? So it's mainly I want to say uh, this previous year, it was mainly businesses, small businesses. OK. Roofing company, construction. Sure. You know, a restaurant, right, stuff like right. that. Yeah. This year I set myself a goal to kind of go towards, you know, these nonprofits. Right. Um, school districts, mm -hmm. you know, bigger, bigger clients. Right. Right. And 
essentially, you know, I'm meeting that goal. Yeah. And so now it's kind of a 50-50, you know. Uh, I'm working with North Kansas City School District now. Nice. Kansas City, Kansas. Nice. Wyandotte County. Um, and various departments. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to work with my high school. <sighs> But for some reason, that's very hard. Bro, <laughs> you're, you're <laughs> preaching to the choir, bro. Yeah. I don't know why. Like, they, I tell them, hey, I do it. They're like, okay, cool. We'll contact you. I don't get nothing. They don't call you back. I'm like, oh, well, all righty. I got to probably you know, go in there. You know, here's the thing, man. For years after I graduated, like when I was probably your age or a little older maybe, right. I tried so hard to go and tutor kids in math or do, you know, give back. You right, know? yeah, somehow. It was like, no. Or no response, really, initially. Right, like a yeah. lot of no responses. Yeah. Mm. Or no, you got to have a degree. Mm. Or no, you this and that. And I'm like, what? Yeah. Like, I just want to help. I, I know, man. <laughs> it yeah. sucks. But you'll get there, though, man. Yeah, I believe yeah, for it. sure. Yeah, They're going to be like, hang on, he's messing with what school district? And he ain't even over here? Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Jonathan, let me, I, I, you know, hearing you talk, man, it, it, I want to let me ask you, man. Yeah. With uh, where you where you came from with this, right? Where you came from, where you started, and where you're at now. Which, and I know you're gonna get even more, brother. Right? Thank you're gonna you, get up you. there. Um, what kind of lessons have you learned in that that whole yeah. transition, bro? Within, and we're only talking, right, Joe? Three years time, man. right? Man, yeah, three so years. Puppy, so, man. I mean, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. With, with with that three years of experience of what you've been doing even, already, even in business terms, he's a puppy, right? Right. Yeah. yeah. Man. I mean, so I. Founded the business, registered in 21. So that's when I knew it was getting serious. Um, but uh, to answer your question, you know, lots of lessons that I endured is kind of like, you know, you said yes to somebody, you kind of have to keep your word. Mm. You know, my uncle told me that all the time. He was my, my dad because my dad at the time wasn't around. Right. So he always like, hey, you got to keep a word that, yeah. you know, that that's what means the most. Yeah. So I took, you know, hey, be responsible. Yeah. Right. Yeah. On time. If you said Friday, it's Friday. Yeah. You know, or let them know otherwise. Right. So kind of those were those lessons, money lessons, right. lots of money lessons. Right. Nobody tells you the hardships. I went through a lot. <laughs> I lost <laughs> lots of money. Yeah. <laughs> lots of money. I bet you did. <laughs> so just kind of knowing, hey, it went bad this time, but next right. time it'll be better. Right. Yeah. You know, just finding that next opportunity. Yeah. yeah. So those were kind of some lessons. Maybe, you know, my uncle said, and I talk about my uncle a lot. He yeah. had a huge impact in my life. Sure. But he told me, you have two ears and one mouth. You listen more than you talk. Man. And to me, that was like. That's Theo, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's Theo. That's yeah. Theo man. talk, man. Shit, you know, like, that's that's right. Yeah, you know, yeah, like, yeah. they're older or somebody has something to say yeah. for a reason. Yeah. They want to help you out. So yeah. listen. Yeah. yeah, because they live through it. Right, you exactly. Know, and and they, they trying to kick a little bit of knowledge, man. Right, yeah. And most, most teenagers, you know, I. I I still think I'm a teenager, but most young adults. <laughs> you look like one. Right. There you go. <laughs> That's a good thing. But most just don't. Yeah. Yeah. They see their parents or their familia, whoever it is, and they're like, you don't know nothing. Or no, you know, I'm a, I'm a figure it out, dad. Or, you know, I got it. Yeah. You know, and most just neglect. Yeah. And I always tell, you know, my friends and younger siblings, and I'm starting to work with uh, high schools, kind of giving them like entrepreneurship classes mm. yeah. point is i always tell them hey like really listen to your parents yeah make them your best friend they're there to help mm. they're not there to you know right, make right. things hard yeah you guys just kind of have a barrier and yeah. you, you know it, it just disrupts everything yeah. you know it's, i think sometimes with with some <clears throat> some kids i mean and, and granted i mean there's there's great parents there's bad parents I mean, yeah, yeah, you know, and, and everybody has whatever it is yeah. but you know i think um that for the most part, I think kids learn that later in life. Yeah, right. Absolutely. You know that the parents are or were correct. I think usually sometimes when they become either they become parents themselves, right. Yep. Right. you know, or they become a certain age where they're living life on their own and taking care of their own responsibilities yeah. and stuff. You, on the other hand, you know, you you you, you hustler man, yeah. got out there and did it. You kind of yeah. learned to, to take that advice and listen right. to it. You yeah, know? and I kind of uh, the way I like to put it, I had to, right. you know, because I was the oldest out of my yeah. three siblings, and there I was like, hey, you know, they'd be like, hey, we all got to work, you right. know, you're gonna be home alone with three kids, children, <laughs> yeah. and I was like, what? Like, okay, yeah. cool, make sure to cook, clean after them, 
do what they need and get done. And I'm yeah. like, okay, all right. Siblings, man. Let's talk about siblings. So who's under you? How so, old is that next one? Alan Pitayo, he is 18. So 18? he's okay. he's actually starting in two weeks. All then, right, Alan, yeah. you better have three businesses. <laughs> that's what I'm saying, saying man. That's you got to outdo your brother, man. <laughs> that's what I'm saying, man. Like, wait, are you putting him on? Like, what's <laughs> it? He's your apprentice now? Yes. Like, what's the deal? So he will be a sales coordinator for Vive. Nice. So my thing is like I I bought my brother when once I start uh, stuff started getting better I was like bro all I'm gonna do is put you on yeah. I'm gonna help you where I can mm. I bought him his first car because I was like hey I worked for mine I borrowed some money with like you know Viva and everything I had I was like hey bro I'm gonna help you out this is a pedestal mm. take advantage don't mm -hmm. get lazy take advantage yeah, yeah, not yeah. everyone gets this. For sure. You're talking so, to him like Theo talked to you. Exactly. Listen, listen now, yeah. you got two ears and one mouth. There you go. Yeah, and it was funny because my <laughs> uncle would say, "Hey, you're gonna have the same conversation yeah. with your siblings." Repeat. And I was like, "Hell no! Nah. What are you talking about? No, yeah. not the creo. I'm like, not old. Yeah, no. But I would be like, no, I never say this to anybody. Yeah. Like, you know, because I was still negligent about what he was telling me. Yeah. But I still listened to it. Yeah. You know. But I was saying this stuff to my brother, and I was like, "Oh wow!" Like that—that that was that was full circle. Shit. It makes sense, though, Man, right? right? It makes right. sense. So. so yeah, he'll be starting at at Vive um, in the next two weeks, sales coordinator. And my thing is like, "Hey, bro, I went through the learning curve. I figured this out on my own, quote unquote. You know, mm. kind of guidance from other yeah. people. But hey, like, if you can avoid that yeah. and get to that next step yeah. without enduring that." Yeah. You'll go way higher Man. in life, oh, yeah. and you're 18. Yeah, you're just you know, bam. Let's yeah. just keep you're it like, going. Yeah, see where I am at 20. Right, you're 18. Yeah, yeah. 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 So you know, my thing was like, we gotta you know be build generational wealth. Right. You, well, you know what they say, man. Strength is in numbers, man. Right. There you go. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Strength is in numbers, man. Yeah. I mean, right. you about, got you got plenty of them there, bro. Right. Yeah. No, I got, yeah. <laughs> Talk about generational wealth. I mean, you know, a lot of that is true. Truly, people think of it just in in uh, uh, dollars, right? Right. Like, oh, you know, my great grandfather passed down thousands of dollars to my grandfather passed down, but honestly, a, a lot of it is wisdom. Yeah. Yeah. It's I wisdom agree. passed down yes. generation to generation. Yep. Lessons learned Correct. passed down. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, like, okay, I saw what happened to them, that generation. Mm -hmm. They gave me their wisdom. I'm not going to repeat that mistake, yeah. you know, or whatever. Correct. You know what I mean? That is generational wealth yeah. as well. And, and that's true because my uncle, again, I mentioned my uncle a lot. Yeah, he yeah. told me, hey, um, you know, everyone you meet, take the good from them. Anything mm -hmm. you don't like. Just don't, you know, disregard it. You know, just keep on walking. Yeah. But take whatever they said good and really run with it. There you go. And you will be slowly, like, you'll mold how you want to be. Yeah. And to me, when he said that, I was like, okay. Yeah, you know, again, I was a kid. You know, I was maybe 15, 16. Yeah. I was like, okay, you know, sure. <laughs> right, whatever. But it slowly started becoming full circle. I was like, wow, I like what he said. Yeah. Grab that. You know, right. him. Yeah. Grab that. The great, greatest thing is that you, rem you remembered it. Correct. You know, yeah. like, you, mm -hmm. you know, the youth, right? Like, you know, I always say that man. they're sponge, man. They're, they're like a sponge. Yes. You know, you yes. just keep Should on be. dumping it, keep on yeah. dumping it in there. Right. They absorb it. They take it. Some of them, they run with it. Mm -hmm. They do great things. Some, they wait till later. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. it's a process, right. you know? Yeah, it doesn't, uh, it's not the same time for everybody, and that's okay. You know, I tell yeah. everyone, you know, that that's okay. So yeah. you're you're right now today, Jonathan, you're, you're a one-man show for Viva Promo and Print, right? Mm -hmm. Your one man show, yeah, yep. um, but you're talking about bringing on your brother. I mean, where where do you you know think think for? I mean, man, shit, I'm almost afraid to say five years because look what you did in two or three. <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, let's I go. mean, let, let's go five years right, though. Like yeah. five or five ten, years, man. man. Where where is where is your company? So Viva is the core. That's my baby. Essentially, my brother would run my sales operation, kind of coordinate, you know, and making sure everyone gets their items fulfilled. Mm -hmm. But Around, around that time, I also learned Viva makes good money, but it's not going to make me rich. So I got my real estate license. Oh, okay. So I took on another venture. Wow. And I started selling real estate. Wow. So I'm a realtor, oh, Kansas and Missouri. Yeah. Point Check is, both got busy. Yeah. And I'm like, you know, delegate, you know, trying to do what yeah, I can. Yeah. And so I was like, if my brother could come and learn this, you know, Viva. Yeah he could get dangerous with him, you know, give him whatever, you know, for him to stay and run the show. Yeah. yeah. And I'm doing real estate. Yeah. But then with real estate got busy, I was like, well, I can't do all the paperwork. You got to get a transaction coordinator. I got, you know, a transaction coordinator that helps me, you know, with my transactions. Yeah. And so I was like slowly creating more free time. And the moment I had free time, <laughs> 
I was like, another business. <laughs> yeah. And so, I, you know, thinking, just hustling, yeah, really. Yeah, yeah, right. So my goal in five years is I want to start a nonprofit, you know, kind of give back to these kids. Okay. You know, okay. they all have ideas that yeah. kind of get stuck maybe because someone told them it's terrible, trash it. Right. Or they didn't have the resources or they thought they needed money. Right. Yeah. Right. And kind of just kind of give back, you know, do some coaching, mm-hmm. one-on-ones. So that's where I want to be in five years. Okay. Have these kind of running in the back. Yeah. And just kind of me going out there, giving talks and trying what, to What are up. you doing more of, real estate or Viva? Viva is my baby. I won't let, yeah, ever let yeah. that go. But real estate right now has been good. I've yeah. been closing at least three deals every uh, every month, actually. Nice. So it, it's been busy. Residential, commercial? Residential. Okay, so, yeah. residential. What's the name of that, man? What's the name so, of that? So Pitayo Real Estate. Yep. Pitayo Real, Real Estate. Real Estate. Yep, yep. So, man. yeah. I'm with a brokerage here in Wyandotte, uh, Quality Cornerstone. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, they kind of, uh, you know, helped me kind of assessorarme. They saw that I really had, you know, skills with running my own business yeah and they were like you're gonna kill it in real estate and i was like i hope you know let, let's do it yeah. right you know how to speak really well too right. i mean you, oh, you're yeah, you're you. out front and yeah. you, you know how to present yourself yeah. like confidently yeah. i mean i'm telling you man i know 40 year olds that yeah. can't do that well, you know and i wasn't like that you know i i mean i mean if you ask anybody in high school they would have not. They You're wouldn't quiet. have thought. Yeah, yeah, quiet. You know, I was because Belton is a primarily white school. Sure. Yeah. yeah so very little Hispanic kids. Yeah. yeah. Maybe it was maybe I want to say ten. And is is English your first language or second? It was my second. So, so okay. Spanish. So, so yeah, you, I'm ESL, fluent. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So yeah, I did have to do ESL mm-hmm. classes and stuff like that for a little bit. Graduated early on, but. I did do it for a little bit. But. I just remember because when I was in school, a lot of our ESL yeah. kids, I, I knew a lot of friends with a lot of them, yes. but they were real quiet. Yeah, they wouldn't you talk. Know, because yeah. they their accent or Correct. something, you know. Correct. Anyway. Yeah, so that that's kind of, you know, um, I ran off with it because I could speak both languages well. Mm-hmm. And my aunt, again, she told me, like, got to help people. Mm-hmm. You know, the kid that doesn't talk much, kind of, you know, back them up. Mm. Right. But I was that person that needed someone to back me up. Uh, <laughs> so it was yeah, kind of hard. Right. I would, you know, kind of be out there and try to help them. Yeah. yeah. And so early on, I kind of took those roles because uh, we're, we come from a Catholic background, my sure. family. Yeah. Uh, we believe in God, Jesus, yeah. you know, La Virgen. Sure. And we went to uh, church every Sunday. Right. And so they uh, obviously were very involved. So they're kind of like, come with me. Mm. And I'm like, all right, you know, like, you know, it's not my favorite thing to do, <laughs> but, sure. you know, I'll do it. Yeah. So they kind of put me in those positions, yeah. Yeah. and I was always volunteering, doing something. Yeah. Yeah. So even in school, they'd be like, you got to do that too. And so I was put on the spot and mm-hmm. just kind of adjusted and kind of ran with it. Right, right. So right, yeah. now, for right now, with what you're all in, involved with and what you're doing, man, what's your morning routine look like, man? When you first wake up in the morning, man, what, what what's, uh, are you looking at you your phone? You go for a 10-mile jog? Like, or... I wish. I, I, I need to do something. But no, so I, I wake up. First thing, obviously, you know, you know, get dressed, whatever. Checking emails. But I check emails, yeah. Oh, really? So my phone starts buzzing probably... I want to say 6.30 or 7, Yeah. right? I don't really get up. I'm going to be real honest with you guys. Maybe <laughs> like 8, 8.30, just because I, I don't want to go you, into early. You're right? an entrepreneur, man. You, you can do that. To, eh? right? but, but there's times I do. But yeah. point is, I'll first do that, you know, check my emails. I probably already have like six missed calls before business hours. Before. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Once it's 9 o'clock, emails start coming in. More phone calls. So then, you know, I make my, my way to the office, maybe run to a coffee shop here nearby mm-hmm. in Wyandotte. And then I get here and just for, first order of business, just kind of attend what I'm already doing on the phone. Right then it's full-fledged phone yeah. calls and right. responding. Yes. And then from there, kind of um, seeing what yesterday's tasks were. Hey, where did an order leave off? You know, yeah. or did I submit this artwork? Did I redesign it? Look it over. Or, hey, was this property under contract? Oh, right. figure out, is there inspections for it? Where right, are we at? Because right. it's multiple businesses. Right. You know, so it's like, hey, where are we at? And just kind of atendiendo uno, no, uno por uno. Right, yeah. right, right. And what's the latest you stayed up working with all this? Right? So <laughs> three, three I'll, in the morning? I'll, just, I'll, just last night. I was, right. <laughs> so I'll be honest. I'll, again, I'm transparent with everybody. So about a year ago, I was staying to like three in the morning, four in the morning, yeah, waking right. up, going back to um, my dad's job because I was still working for yeah. him. Um, I was getting here around like 9 a.m. 
So I was hustling. Now, yeah. I'll be honest, like, I still work, like, maybe till 9 or 10. Yeah. But I'm like, you know what? That's tomorrow's problem. I'll, you know, I'll get yeah, to yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. But I wish I, you know, I could keep going and hustling because I love it. Yeah. But it gets to a point where it's just kind of like, you can only do so much. Yeah. And it just has to wait. And it's normal. When did you actually break away from working with your dad or your tío? Like, so I've been, I've been self-employed for about I want to say nine months now. Oh, okay. So I was still working for my dad. I was doing uh, sales, concrete sales. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They opened a ready mix business called R and R Ready Mix, mm-hmm. and they were selling concrete to uh, people like that had a side hustle. They worked their job, yeah. you know, 50, 60 hours a week, but right. on the weekends, they'd want to pour, pour a driveway. Okay. So I was coordinating those sales. So if they wanted concrete at 6 a.m. in the morning, mm. I had to coordinate it, be up at 6, and, you know, make sure they got what they needed. And, you know, sales, like, hey, type this up, call the city, get permits. So they, but there was no processes because they're a small business too. They were founded also in 2019. Right. Mm-hmm. So was, they kind of were like, well, here it is, do it. Mm. And I was like, well, okay, I'll, I'll call. You know, I don't know what to say, yeah, but yeah, I'll yeah. figure it out. Right. Yeah. So I branched away after um, ultimately my Vive was just too much. Yeah. Like it was growing rapidly. I was mm-hmm. going to networking events at the Hispanic Chamber, um, you know, started going to like Overland Park Chamber, any, any chamber yeah, yeah, that, yeah. you know, I could kind of set my foot in and you mm-hmm. know, start talking to people. Yeah. I was going to ask you about that. I, I read yeah. that you're a, a ambassador yes. for the Hispanic Chamber. I am. Yeah. What does that mean exactly? Does so, Carlos get to call you directly and uh, say ambassador for me? Or what, right. is, what does that mean? So I just recently, <laughs> I've been an ambassador for maybe about, I want to say like eight months to approximately, but now I'm chair, uh, co-chair, co-chair ambassador, chair, sorry. Right. Yeah, co-chair ambassador for the Hispanic Chamber. So our goal is to, you know, when there's somebody at a networking event, that's standing alone or, you know, doesn't know who to talk to. Mm-hmm. We approach them. We come to them be like, hey, how can we help? You know, you know, what What do you do? Tell me about you. What's your story? Right. Oh, hey, you know what? Fulano de tal. He, you should talk to him. Let me introduce you to this person. Yeah. Kind of because most people aren't go-getters. You know, they right. need help. You, yeah. you know, they're just there standing with their drink, you know, <laughs> just in a corner. So our goal is to kind of put somebody in the room. Man, and get you know, going. that's crazy because I remember one time, Somebody <laughs> approached me like that, man. And now it makes sense, man. I, w- I think I was at Blanco Negro one time, man. Right. The Blanco Negro Gala, I, right? Uh, I'm not sure, but yes. Yeah, well, it's it's a long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But somebody did come up to me and, and did the exact words that you said. Yeah. And me being me, I was like, I'm all right, man. <laughs> you were like, I'm no, all right. I'm, I'm cool, okay. Man. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Get out of here, man. But I mean, yeah. you know, if I would have known, yeah. you know, exactly. Like, oh, come here, man. I got some ideas. Let me talk to you. Right. Well, so, so you're basically your connector, right? Yeah. So yes. I'm connecting yeah, people yeah, with man. the right person, maybe. Correct. Or the person that could help them. Right. So that's the most thing. I kind of endured those things. Like I, when I first joined the chamber, I was 17. Yeah. <laughs> I was still working for my dad. Wow. Yeah. I would, after lunch or something, I would yeah. go do, go to a networking event. Cause I knew they were kind of involved in that yeah. stuff, but kind of stopped going. Well, I wanted to go. Yeah. I went in there and kind of approached to Carlos and I thought he was like, he could speak Spanish. Nah. It's the Hispanic chamber. I yeah, thought, okay, yeah, Spanish. Yeah. I walked in there. I was like, Hey Carlos, como estas? And then he was like, hold up, hold up. I speak English. And that, to me, that was like, what? Okay, yeah. you know, only English, but, you know, and I started getting involved. He was impressed. You know, he's like, you're 17. Like, what are you doing here? Kind of joking around. Yeah. So then, you know, he told me, like, you know, basically, like, I'm going to help you. Let's do this. And essentially, you know, me getting help, I was like, well, you know, it seems like, you know, they would, I would go to these events. He would kind of guide me. Yeah. yeah. But then he slowly realized I probably didn't need guidance. Like, I just... If that guy was really important, I was going to go talk to him. Yeah. And, you know, and I just went on with it. And yeah. slowly I was like, there's people that aren't like that. Mm-hmm. Let me help them. Yeah. And there was that ambassador program. And eventually I ended up, you know, getting nominated for coach. Nice, man. Carlos is great, man. We yes. had we had, him, we had him on, yes. as, yes. on the Works early episode as well. Yeah. Yes, yes. I was I was uh, going to tell you, you may know this about Carlos already. Uh, Carlos with the Spanish language is kind of like Batman. So, you know, Batman, it only he only comes out certain times, right? right. Like when he needs to, you <laughs> yeah. know. Yeah. That's Carlos yeah. in Spanish. Yep. Car- yeah. Carlos will flip the Spanish. Yeah. 
you know, don't tell him I told you that. Right, right. But he's, he's very fluent in <laughs> yeah. Spanish. Yeah, there Just you don't go. tell him I told you there that. There you go, yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> shout, out, shout out Carlos. Carlos, man. Yeah, no, I, 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 Carlos, I, owe, man. I owe it to him. He's helped me a lot. He, God, hey, got me Carlos is the dude, man. He's, he's a great sir. guy, man. Yes, sir. So, okay, so your, your real estate, you talked about, you know, you're doing three deals a month, rough, give yep. or take. Yep, yep, yep. Um, are you anticipating that that's going to spin into something more lucrative for you in the future as well? So, yeah, I think it is. It's just the start. You know, it's kind of crazy to say that, but it's just the start. Yeah. You know, I'm a baby, you know, you could call yeah, it. Yeah, you know, yeah. I'm a newbie. Yeah. So my puppy, thing you're is a puppy. a puppy. There you go. That's yeah. the word you use. So essentially, I have to, like, have somebody help me. Right. So that's where, like, my brother, hey, you're going to be doing Viva. I'll do some stuff. Yeah. Real estate, transaction coordinator. Oh, okay. I'll still, you know, open doors, show the property, explain things, negotiate, but someone does the paperwork. Gotcha. Right. So, you know, that's the way I'm going about it. Um, what's, what's your website, man, for that? So that's pitayorealestate.com. So pitayo, P I T A L L O, realestate.com. Nice. Yeah. All right, so man. they could check out there. You know, there's lots of programs, but essentially, you know, I have to delegate tasks because I'm kind of everywhere, my hands are everywhere. And I can't be the doer. Yeah. I could be the, you know, the salesman, yeah. be the spokesperson, but somebody, you know, really strong individuals have to do the work, yeah. you know. So kind of trying to do that. Right. That's awesome, man. So, okay, couple questions. Yes, yes, yes. Do you remember have you ever been really have you ever been like somebody just complete asshole to you? Oh yeah. Yeah. No, definitely. Tell, tell us a story about that. No, don't use names or no. Yeah, you don't would, need would, a name job, but which just, one? Man, so I've had people just kind of like you know they see I'm young, and they're just like you know man you don't know nothing, mm. and I, I I mean to their credit yeah I might not know nothing but I'm willing to do it or yeah, find out right, right you know right. they're like you know what no you're not gonna do it quit just stop like they've told you that yeah like no, just, these are businesses you have went to try to help them or just individuals so around individuals you? that maybe are with a business owner and they hear that I'm pitching something and they're uh, like that won't work. Don't waste your time. Maybe wow. trying to help me out. But I'm just like, no, like, I'll, I'll figure it out. Thank you. I, I believe it. But, you know, take their advice a little bit. Yeah. Maybe go a different approach. Yeah. But, yeah, I've been told, you know, that won't work. Or, you know, the no's that I've gotten from businesses yeah. saying, like, hey, no, we're, you know, do you have a business? No. No, then we can't work with you. Um, you know, people talk down kind of like. So nowadays, like I said, I don't do 100% of the stuff in-house anymore. Yeah. Most people are like, you're a scammer. You're scamming people uh, because you're upselling. And I'm just like, if you go get like five other quotes, man, we'll be about the same price. Yeah. But, you know, they, they just see that as like, no, because they, they don't like what you're doing. You know, right. they're just like, hey, why are you doing it? You know, quit it. So I've gotten feedback like that. Mm. Yeah. But again, you just kind of kind of keep going with it, you know, block them out and do That's your thing. shit off your shoulder and keep on going. Man. There you go. Yeah. So flip side of that, Jonathan. Who were those, and I know your family is probably yes. the biggest supporters you had, sounds like grandma, abuela, mm. mom, Theo. Theo. Yep. But outside of them, who who were those individuals? Like You're like, man, these people, a yeah. couple of folks you remember. So the and you're Hispanic, still started, right. so you know. <laughs> so the Hispanic Chamber. Again, okay. I went in there when I was 17. Yeah. I told people the idea or started networking with my business cards, you know, had maybe like shirt on or something, and they'd be like, Man, I'd meet like some CEO or you know a sales rep. You gotta hear this kid. Hear this kid right now. And he, he'd like introduce me to people. Yeah. He's like, say what you told me just now and say it again. And I tell them, and they were all impressed. Yeah. So essentially, most people would hype me up. They're like, dude, where are you gonna be in ten years? Like, yeah. I can't even imagine. Yeah. And to me, hearing that, you know, it's uplifting. You know, oh, people believe sure. in you. Wow. Yeah. And so I'm trying to Adds think a log of, to the fire, man. Right? Yeah. yeah. So I'm trying to think of individuals, but it's a collective. I, yeah. I couldn't call out anybody, but Hispanic Chamber has been like the strongest, you know, organization, you know, that's kind of helped me and mold me where I am. Yeah. I'm a part of the Overland Park Chamber, too. Yeah. Shout out OP so, Chamber. Yeah. So OP Chamber, I'm on some committees there. As I'm well. actually involved in the Overland Park Chamber ah, through okay. my professional life. There you go. I'm in their leadership program right oh, now. Oh, you are? Yeah. See, they invited me to that. Yeah. And in fact, in fact, Real quick side story. There's a young kid. Um, he's in high school. I know you're talking about. Alex? Uh, is it the co the kid with the coffee? No, no, no. no, 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 no okay. No, no. So this is another this kid, individual. He's in a whole different chamber. Okay. But I've met him uh -huh. when they bring all the Johnson County chambers together. Okay. He's he's this young 
Latino kid named Alex yeah. Sanchez, I believe. Yeah. And he comes up to me and he's like, who are you and what do you do? And I'm like, oh, I'm so-and-so. This is, you know, this is what I do. Da, da, da. And he's like, man, I just... I'm impressed because you like you're like one of the only Latinos in this whole right. air place, yes. yes. And and you speak and you talk, you know, and people talk to you. And you do I things. just wanted to meet you, yeah. And I'm like, okay. And I said, I was like, great, man. So you know, yeah. it's young people like yeah. yourself yeah. and 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 Alex, man, out there, you know, yeah. that's awesome. Man. Making so, moves, man. yeah. So like the OP Chamber again, they kind of molded me also because I joined maybe there when I was, I want to say 18, almost mm-hmm. 19. So again, I was still pretty young, yeah. And, yeah. And they just were like, oh, you want to grow your business? Sure, let's yeah. do this. And slowly, you know, my, you know, the way I was thinking, right, was like, well, this is the Hispanic crowd. But if I want to grow, I got to also get to the other flip side, you know, mm. you know, uh, Americans, white people, right, yeah, yeah. speak only English. So I was like, where do most Everybody, people live? Yeah. I was like, over the park. So yeah. I chose there. And essentially, um, I started going and I realized that same thing that Alex realized. I was maybe one or two other, you know, Hispanics yeah. or, you know, and I'm like, what? Yeah. Like, there's no Latinos in here. Yeah, what, yeah, what is yeah. going on? Yeah. And I was like, this is where I need to be. Yeah. <laughs> That's, That's awesome, man. Yeah. What about the shout out, Danielle, man, the KCK chamber? Oh, I, I'm not actually involved there. I met him once. Yeah. I've thought about, you know, joining it because, of, yeah. of course, I'm here in Wyandotte. Yeah. But I'm like, I'm, I'm too stretched. I need to, you know, focus on these two and run with it for Drew now. Drew Eames was... Yeah. Our second episode. Yeah, mm-hmm. he's actually the chair of the KCK Chamber oh, Board right now. I did not know that. Yeah, yeah. I got to check out what they're Drew, doing. Man. Yeah, yeah. Shout he's out. Our, yeah. yeah, he's an early episode. And early, yeah. early. Yeah, that's what's up, man. So, um, what is a piece of advice? And I know lessons you talked about. Yes, but let's talk at advice. Advice. You know, there's a, there's some entrepreneurs watching this right yes. now. Yeah, yeah. And they're, they're out they, there, or man. they got an idea. I promise you, they're you out know? there watching. Yes. Man. Give, give them some advice, man. Give them some, you know, you talked about Theo, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, you know, Theo's two years, good, one guess, yeah. you know, but, but some business <laughs> Kick advice. Kick some Theo man. advice yeah. to yeah. him. Drop some knowledge. So I, I think most importantly, you know, um, I think you just got to have a, some sort of structure. You know, school's important, right? I didn't go to high I mean, I went to high school, sorry. I didn't go to college. I mm-hmm. went two months, dropped out. Yeah. It wasn't for me. But like, point this is, ain't making me money. I'm out. Right. <laughs> so point was, I tell people, but the lessons are important, not necessarily the material. You know, maybe you're talking about a cat and a mouse and, you know, something happened with it. Yeah. Right. But it's the questions they're asking. Uh, yeah. You problem solving, analyzing, you know, seeing what, you know, your mind can do. Can you, you know, solve a problem or, you know, figure out something. Right. So to me, that's important. That's the bigger picture. Like yeah. kids need to focus in on school. You know, the subject not, might not be interesting, but focus and really understand how systems and things work, why mm. they're there for. Yeah. So I think that's one advice I yeah, maybe yeah. give. Another one is, you know, uh, I guess don't don't be afraid mm. for anything. You know, failure is part of your journey. Yeah. It's, you know, it's going to happen right, one right. way or another. Yeah. You know, you just got to pick yourself up and do it again. You know, try something different or right. keep running that same thing. Right. But there's a crowd for you somewhere. Right. You just got to find it. So, you know, that would be another advice, you know, I, I kind of give. That's what's up, That's man. great, yeah. man. That's great coming from another young, a young man. one. A young one, two <laughs> young ones, man. Man. Yeah. Um, do you know anybody like yourself out here? Like, you want to give a shout out to one or two people that like you know, somebody like else, young, out here young entrepreneur okay. hustler like yourself? Okay, I think somebody else. They're a little bit older, uh, but the girl that actually does my marketing, she just started her business too. Like, I want to say a year ago, okay. Leslie uh, Cristal. She does uh, Rev Up Media Marketing. Okay, shout she does out. my marketing. She's killing it too. Shout out, Leslie. Somebody I look up to. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, uh, I'm trying to think who else is kind of doing things. Uh, my friends, they started a con- contracting company, okay. construction. So shout out them, pro contracting. Pro contracting. So they're kind of you know doing residential yeah, 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 remodeling yeah. work. So yeah, individuals that I'm like, wow. Yeah. Even though you know there's no real like guidance or hey, what should I do or what, they're still going after yeah. it every figuring, day. They're figuring it out, right? Right, right. So shout you, out them. You, you, I'm I'm so looking forward to where you go <laughs> in the next handful of years, yeah, certainly yeah, five, ten years. Jonathan, have you been on a podcast yet? 
This is my first. It's your first. Man. Yeah. Well, don't forget to interrupt KC. Don't, right? Yeah, man. <laughs> I, I, you <laughs> know, don't forget to interrupt KC. Hey, we'll, like, we'll, we'll have you back, man. man yes. We'll man, definitely you know, have you back, and yeah. we'll talk about we'll talk about now. Then. Yeah. yeah, we're yeah, gonna re- replay this for you. Like, what do you think about yourself, man? Yeah, <laughs> listen to yourself. <laughs> yeah, man. Like, yeah. Man, he was smart. Right. Yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, and that's the funny part. I'll look back at like Snapchat stories. You know, I use Snapchat a lot. Mm-hmm. Instagram. And I'll look at a video that I was going to like a federal building or Johnson County, like, you know, permits or something. Yeah. And I was like, I did not know what I was doing. <laughs> like that kid was just out there. Yeah. yeah. And to me, it's like, you know, I think that now me in two years will probably say the same thing. Like wow. he did not know what he was doing, yeah. but I was just going after growth, it. man. Doing it, you know, it's learning from growth, everything. Let me tell yeah. you something, man. I, 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 you don't even want to see the videos of when we first sat down and did this. <laughs> I mean, yeah. it's just like, what are y'all doing? Yeah. You guys I are mean, killing it. You, guys you know, it's it. like, <laughs> is it? It's like, yeah, man. It's, oh, it's man. a couple of hiccups. Yeah, it's a couple of hiccups. Oh my gosh. But <laughs> that's and, and we still hiccup sometimes, man. But, yeah, but it's that's all how good, it works, man. right? Yeah, yeah keep man. working through it, right? Yeah. 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 I mean, people. I mean, like it's funny because we've seen. I've seen people say, "Man, you." You guys really know what you're doing, you know. So oh, I'm like, yeah, dude, like, we're li- this is like this right now. You're number 17. Oh wow! Episode. Wow. Yeah. Your 17th wow. episode. Hey, that's my favorite number, actually. Hey, so is there it we really? go. Hey. Yeah, it's meant to I be. Mean, <laughs> say, meant to be, man. Yeah, like man. your 17th, man. Hey. I mean, you know, like cool. I see all these. Like very, I remember number one. I remember. You know, I remember like, zero. <laughs> you yeah, know, right. like the idea. Yeah, right, just yeah. zero, like sitting down, remember, just yeah. messing around, man. But, but I mean, for you, man, like that journey, mm. Jonathan, you know, you come in and just your advice, you know, that's you, man. Don't yeah. be afraid. Yeah. Yeah. Go out there, fail. Yeah. Go out there, learn, yeah. you know. Dust yourself up D- and keep yeah, on going again, up, man. man. Yeah, it's funny. It. I, I have a 15 year old son. Oh, wow. And uh, we got our lawn mowed the other day. Oh. And uh, we were backing out, and I told him, I said, hey, man, you need to learn to be a weed. And he looks at me this crazy. He's like, learn, what? learn to be a weed. Right, yeah. And, he, and I said, look at that weed. That guy just cut the grass yesterday. Look at the weed. It's already standing back up. Yep, yeah. And he's like, oh, okay. I didn't know what you meant. Right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But, you know, put It'll me, get him later. Yeah, you know, yeah. you, you can get chopped down. Yeah. But yeah. learn to stand back up. Right, exactly. You know? Yeah, anyway, man, for sure. Yeah, so I I try to speak to those because I wasn't like that growing up. Mm-hmm. Like I had a friend that kind of like watched over me. You know, I was really scrawny. You know, as a kid, you know, short too. I had a late growth spurt. Yeah. But point is, you know, I I want to make sure people knew my presence, but Absolutely. I was still kind of like scared. Yeah. But you know, you just kind of keep going, grow back up. You know, and just understand, hey, you're in the room and you you're somebody. Yeah. yeah. You know, some something my uncle told me again. Um, you're not. No one is more than you and less than you. You're always equal. Mm. Ah, so just sure. when you walk in the room, don't matter who they are, yeah. you're the same. You're another you human, yeah. and you just gotta come in and yeah. you know work like that. Man, yeah. I need to meet your Theo. Man. Yeah, man. Just, <laughs> hey, we'll do some. We'll do hey, some Theo, with Theo, man. Hey, we'll hey, do hey, some hey, with Theo, man. Yeah. 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 We need. A, hey, he needs to be here right now. He man. might be my Theo. Shit, man. It sounds <laughs> right. like one of mine. Uh, that's what's up, man. So. Yeah. Hey, we wish you the very best of luck, Jonathan. Thank man, you, for you, sure. you have an incredible story for a young entrepreneur, young hustler. Thank you. You know, coming from us. Well, man. just even getting anybody, you know, who who has that um, thought. Right. You know, if anybody in our audience that has a thought man. on where they want to go, where they want to be, you know, you're a prime yeah. example, bro, yeah. of, of how you have them thoughts, man, and you right. ran with it, and yeah. you just kept on climbing that ladder, man. Yeah. You kept on climbing them stairs. You kept on progressing, and you still are, yeah. right? And you still, and he still is, it man. still yeah. is. You know, so anybody who has any type of idea mm. of what they want to do, hey, just like you said, man, it might break you down a little bit, mm-hmm. and you know, just keep on going. Yeah. Might right. take some losses. Yeah. But yeah. you hey, win. That polo shirts, right. man. Yeah. That polo shirts, man, killed you, man. <laughs> right. They killed right. you, man. Hey, you know, things... But look at you now, bro. Right, exactly. 450 shirts, right? Yeah, there you go, right. Not so come on, man. my thing is, I always tell people this, you know, I try to help, right? I Obviously, I'm juggling, you know, doing lots of things. Yeah. But if somebody really wants to, you know, reach out, you know, just reach out to me. You know, my socials, you know, I'll, I'll shout them out. You know, Jonathan Mitayo on Instagram. Okay. Just DM me. Yeah, do it. You know, man. reach out. You know, I'd love to collaborate one way or another, some advice. Because yeah. I was in their shoes not too long ago. Right. And, you know, my thing is I want to give back. Mm-hmm. And right now what we're doing with the Hispanic Chamber, 
uh, with uh, a small business committee. I'm also a co-chair on that committee. Yeah, uh, yeah, so yeah. there's another yeah. thing. But we're creating a series of, you know, of I guess uh, events or seminars, mm-hmm. kind of having individuals in certain fields talk about, you know, their business and why it's important. Yeah. You know, we want to invite small businesses and people, you know, wanting to learn more. Absolutely. But essentially, you know, we could tune in, you know, just check it out and, you know, essentially just learn, you know, kind of absorb everything, you know, whether it's an idea or it's a business, just kind of run with it and kind of get some guidance. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, I love to, you know, people could reach out. That's awesome, yeah. man. Yeah. What That's do you amazing. what do you do for fun, man? Hey, so start I, a business. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah. So, no, for fun. I mean, family. Family's yeah. important. You, you know? got some family traditions you like to share, man? So, I mean, we honestly, baseball. It's oh, funny really? you say oh. Royals. So my mom, yeah. even with her kind of, you know, struggling a little bit, you know, yeah. trying to make ends meet, yeah. she would make sure, you know, she'd take us to a Royals game. Yeah. Yeah. That was the so, only way we bonded with our mom because mm. we just didn't click with other things because she was working. But baseball was it. Okay. Yeah. She'd get like, you know, the cheapest tickets, whatever yeah. it was for yeah. four children. Yeah. We'd go out, have a shirt. And she would wait at the gates to get signatures outside when they were done. Oh wow! And oh, we, really? I met Salvador Perez, wow. Alcides Escobar. I don't know if you, yeah, you guys yeah. follow baseball oh, like come that. On, man. Yeah, uh, um, Omar Infante, mm-hmm. Edison Bolquez, lots of players. Point yeah. is, we loved it, and we, you know, yeah. that's how we bonded. So yeah. baseball is like a huge thing in our family. Yeah, nice. Um, Chiefs, of course. You know, oh, everyone. Man. You know, right yeah. now with the Chiefs watching sports. Um, church, church is important. Yeah, I will say, I'll be honest, been slacking a little bit, but yeah. hey, Lord forgive me. But <laughs> point is, you're you know, forgiven. Right there we go. <laughs> yeah. But point is, you know, church. That's one thing. You know, our faith, right. making sure yeah, that you sure. know if we have a problem, you know, pray, rezar, and you know, kind of put it in His hands and see That's where it goes. Man. You watch soccer? I don't. You don't? I don't. So my fa- my family's from North uh, Mexico, uh-huh. Chihuahua is on the north side. Yeah. So they mainly like it's baseball. Yeah. So baseball, I played baseball for like. I want to say two years rec rec league. Yeah. I, I, something tells me, man, you're going to be pretty busy around the World Cup. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I hope so. I mean, that, I'm getting ready. <laughs> there's a there's a lot coming here yes. in, in about a year, year and yeah. a half. Yeah. What position that. you play? You're playing baseball. Right? So I played again. That was just like a thing I was doing. I played second base, yeah. and I want to say was it left field. Yeah. I wasn't too good at it because again, was it was, high school. No, I was. Uh, it was middle school. Oh. It was rec ball, but point is, I was too little. I, I didn't, you know, you I didn't, didn't grow. I didn't grow. All the kids were. Man, you know, have you big. seen Jose Altuve? Right. I Come on, bro. I, wish, yeah, I, <laughs> I mean, he gave everybody short hope. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, hey, man, like, uh, yeah. hey, that's hope right there. Man. I should have looked up to that because I actually have a ball from him. He threw me one no when I was a kid. Shit? Wow. I was, uh, I had my glove and he was there and he just like saw me. I was like, oh, Altuve, Altuve. He was catching. I was like, here, you know, you come sign it. And he just gave me like a ball. Wow. He was playing with. I was like, "All right, I still have it." Hey. I, like, hey. awesome. I should have ran with that, but yeah, he's a hall of famer, man. Yeah, yeah, he's most great. definitely. Yeah, Do, yeah. What about music, man? What kind of music you into? Lots of country. Oh, so, yeah. okay. I, I love. But give country. me an artist. Yeah, so Luke Combs, Luke Combs, Morgan Wallen, um, Riley Green. Uh, Do you go to their there? concerts? I went to Luke Combs, Riley Green's. Yeah. Um, who else? I'm trying to think. Uh, there's this one song I forget the artist's name. It's White Horse. Sing it, bro. Sing it. Yeah, right. I gotta sing. Yeah. Come on, sing <laughs> it, man. Another talent. Uh, so, <laughs> no, you guys would <laughs> another not business, another karaoke right. business. Yep, there you go. <laughs> so, country, corridos, of course. Oh, I yeah. mean, yeah. That's give me, old give school. me an artist, corridos. I mean, let's uh, Los Tigres del Norte, okay, yeah. Huracanes. Um, yeah, those are some. Yeah, the OGs. Yeah, like, man, yeah, that's what yeah. my grandpa yeah. and you my don't like the new, the new, the new, like Peso Pluma. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll, I'll be honest. Like it's catchy. Don't yeah, get me wrong. Yeah, but no, I'm not a big fan. Like, you know, I, I, I say <laughs> I say the same thing, and I've said it before. You know, on, on here, I think you know some of the newer music is kind of like, um, like. The new country, some of it's okay, some of it's garbage. Right. The yeah. new hip hop, some of it's okay, some yeah, of it's garbage. I agree. You know, the same new yeah. corridos, some of it's okay, some of it's garbage. I was going to mention <laughs> so, Interrupt KC will be going to see Ramon Ayala. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. Later this year. Hey, there so we go. We're gonna be in the we're gonna, building. We're gonna man. put them on the table. Man. We're gonna try and get them and sit down. That'd be good. I, I, man, you guys could definitely. If that, do that. happened, oh my god, bro, we're, I'm gonna drink yeah. a whole bottle of tequila before yeah, that. Well, yeah, we're yeah. gonna drink two I mean, of them. There. When <laughs> is he coming? Uh, August, August 30th. Yeah. August 30th. Okay, sweet. Yeah, yeah, no, I know he definitely does. Speaking, sit of, speaking of old school. Yeah, there you, you know, go. Yeah, I mean, man, it don't get. No, I've heard stories. Yeah, go ahead. What was that? 
No, you like you like his. No, music? I do, I do. So I listen to Ramon Ayala. Anything really, you know, yeah. old school. Like I'll listen to. Stuff I've heard, like that. I've heard stories. I have a friend. He's he his Thea used to own in Argentine down here. Okay, an old theater. Oh, and he told me he remembers when Ramon Ayala used to come and play it there. Ah, what? like when he was just coming up. Right. Yeah. You know. Wow. I mean, it's crazy to hear these right. stories, bro. Yeah, full circle. Yeah. But now they're, you, know, you love country. Yes. And there's an artist coming. Well, there's a lot of artists coming yeah. to Kansas City, but he came last year. Yeah. And my wife, we got tickets. So you got to go if you've never heard this guy. But his name is Larry Fleet. Larry Fleet. Never F-L-E-E-T. heard. But yes. E E T. Okay. This dude is like, he is not Chris Stapleton. Right. Yeah, but if I had to get a comparable, yeah, that's he's him. Chris Stapleton. Okay, then I think I'd love it. Because that's you the name I was trying to get. Yeah, Chris Stapleton. Larry I Fleet, like man. And it's it's July 25th, I think. Okay. He's coming in concert now? He's going to be, or? yeah, he's going to be July 25th. He's going to be at KCPL Live. Okay, sweet. On the stage. There we go. Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah man, yeah. you got to yeah, check you him told out, me. man. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I don't know if I'm going to be around for that, but point is, you love country. Yeah. That's something I'd go Bro, to. I'd, I'd love to. It's a, he's, yeah. I went to see him last year at the Truman. Okay. Off Truman Road. Yes. Amazing concert. Wow. Wow. Um, no, I mean, there's like these incredible performers. You know, Chris yeah. Stapleton, if it's that type of music, I, I'm going. I, I Do love you got stuff the like Morgan that. Wallen tickets yet? No, my sister was kind of yelling at me about it because <laughs> I took her to Luke Combs. I, hey, <laughs> I might know somebody that got some. Man. Hey, there we go. Yeah. I know somebody. There we man. go. If you know somebody and I, they're yeah, discounted, hey, I'm going. <laughs> yeah, man, right. yeah, but yeah. my sister was like, hey. You know, let's buy them. They're on discount. I'm like, let's just wait, you know, she, because she loves it. I kind of yeah. got her into it. And now she's like, let's go, let's go, let's go. So I got to go now. But right, I love right, Morgan right. Wallen, too. So yeah, yeah. That's what's up, Jonathan, yeah. man. Yeah. So before we get out of here, man, is there anything you want to say before we get out of here? Um, you want to express at all? I, I want to say, I guess, thank you to everybody, you know, that's kind of helped me to get to this point, my Absolutely. family. Um, you know, the businesses and folks that kind of were like giving me advice, you know, hey, do this, don't do this, mm-hmm. you know, molding me, the Hispanic Chamber, Overland Park Chamber. Um, and I guess my last couple words would be like, hey, you know, if you're a young kid, high school, college, you know, or you just lost a job or something, there's something out there, yeah. you know, an idea you have that you don't think might Even work. an older person. Right. Anybody, you know, yeah. there's something. And, you know, my thing is I want to use, you know, your guys' platform and my platform to really understand like, hey, you can do it too in yeah. a couple of years. It yeah. can be fast. Yeah, for sure. You man. just got to keep going. Yeah. Just got to keep going. One of, the, one of the greatest entrepreneurial yeah. movies in recent history is The Founder. Yeah. Have you, you know uh, what I'm talking yes, about? Yes, I, I love that movie. That yeah. movie, and he didn't start until he was 50. Right. I mean, yeah. you know, it's, the movie starts with him talking about being 50. Yeah. And he's right. like, you know, he, people think I should quit and I should get ready for retirement. Yeah. Right. Yeah. He just, he just kept, kept going. going. Yeah, he yeah. kept going. Yeah, so. so that's my thing. Just kind of understand that, hey, you can be in your unique situation, but there's something out there, and you got to just get to it. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, for sure, man. Yeah. Man, you you give me hope, John, for the future, man. <laughs> well, you know? I'm sure you you give a lot of people that. Yeah. yeah. You know, I mean, it, it, for everybody who's gonna listen and watch this, you know, who yep. has some ideas, man. Yep, yep. Listen to this young man, man. man. Yeah, thank you, thank you. And I, I reach out to, to him for business. Yes. Yeah, I mean, this kid, yeah. man, he I can help. He can help. Yeah, you know, up in this, on that real estate, media, man. promotional products, you know, whatever it is, or just in general. Hey, like, I love, I like connecting with people. You know, I was told, in order, you know, you got to give to get, and sometimes you give and you don't get nothing, mm. and that's fine. That's yeah. part of it. Yeah. Most people want to get luego luego. They want to sell something. They think anybody that talks to them wants to buy their product or their service. And no, you really got to be a people person, care for what they have to say in their story. Right. Right. So my thing is like, hey, you know, you don't have to buy nothing from me. You could buy from somebody else that I, you know, my competition. Mm -hmm. Right. But we could still talk and just have a regular conversation, see where you're at and how I can help. Yeah. So, yeah. That's That's what's up, brother. I'd love to do it. Well, listen, man, thank you for joining us on Interrupt KC, man. We appreciate it. We wish you the best of luck. We know this isn't the last we're going to hear from (laughs) you. Um, We're going to have you back on. We're going to have you back on. I look forward to your future, brother. For sure. And uh, thank you, everybody, for watching, man. This is Interrupt KC, JL. D-Rod, man, if you guys like what you see, man, don't forget to hit that like button, share, subscribe, and comment. Whatever you like about this young man here, man, go ahead and put in them comments, man. Yeah. let him read them as well thanks Appreciate for your time you, man. Man. Yeah, thank you peace bye